Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about the total cryptocurrency market capitalization risk metric. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, the people on the premium list have been using this for a while. I've never actually presented this risk metric on the public channel, I don't believe, but this will be the first time. So. A lot of you may hear me say things like, I do not think we're necessarily near a market cycle peak by a lot of the metrics we look at, but it does seem like we could be coming close to a local top, okay? And in one of the recent videos, I, I went into detail as to the difference between a theoretical local top and a market cycle top. And I think there's a, a very key distinction between the two. Okay, so the risk metric that we discuss on the channel, we haven't discussed them in a while because I, once they get to the higher risk bands, I, I tend to leave that for the premium list. But one of the reasons I've, I've gotten a lot of questions about, well, what do you mean a correction? I'm not saying it has to happen tomorrow, okay? I'm not saying we'll have a correction next week. These things can play out over longer periods of time than a lot of times we can imagine. What I am saying is that at some point over the next few months, I don't know if it's gonna be a couple weeks from now or three months from now, I really don't know. I would expect a sizable correction in the entire asset class as a whole. I'm not specifically talking about any given cryptocurrency. There's some cryptocurrencies that whenever they do have a correction could be at a higher price than their current valuations, okay? But when you look at this chart, we can see there's a few times in history when we got to this level. So we just, we look back, we say, okay, well, when did we reach these levels in the past? Well, we say, okay, well, we reached it here and we had a swift correction, but it wasn't that bad in terms of the time needed to wait it out. I mean, we, we actually ended up putting in a new, a much higher peak just two years later. And then another peak less than a year after that, that all ultimately peaked at the upper risk band. So if you're not familiar with the risk metric, it ranges from zero to one, and it's color-coded here from blue to red, so blue means historically low risk, red means historically high risk. So down here is relatively low risk, up here is relatively high risk, low risk, high risk. Not the lowest risk in the world, but it did come back down and give people the opportunity to reaccumulate before trending higher. Now, these two cycles, so cycle one and then cycle two, had very clear defined peaks, local peaks, where we where we then pulled back a bit. Now, the reason why this is important is because all three of them would have presented the opportunity to reaccumulate if you had waited until, say, below the 0.5 risk level in terms of the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. Over here, we went back down into the to the 0 to 0.2 region. Here, we actually went down to around 0.3 to 0.4 or so. So it would have given you the opportunity to reaccumulate but it didn't go back down to the lower risk band levels. And this is why people, you know, people always wanna know when, when is too early to start buying in a bear market or during a correction. And it, it's hard to know, right? I mean, and honestly, it's hard to know. I, I won't be able to tell you exactly when. What I can say is there are low risk times to enter the market, and then there are higher risk times to enter the market. So with that in mind, you know, if, if all you ever do is you wait until we get to a very low risk level to start accumulating, there's nothing wrong with that. It just means you're taking a more conservative approach. So you're more so looking at accumulating in this region here and this region right here and then in this one right here and then one more opportunity back in March. OK, so you'd be looking at those main opportunities. If you want to be more risky with your money, you could accumulate up to higher risk levels, right? You don't have to accumulate only at 0.2, you could accumulate up to 0.3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, whatever, right? You could accumulate to whatever risk levels you want. Now, so the first cycle, we had a major move to the top and then a, a, a fairly substantial pullback, but then we ultimately trended much higher just a couple years later and then another peak less than a year after that. This cycle, the last cycle, had phases where we got really heated really quickly and then we had sizable pullbacks, um, you know, that took us back to say between 0 0.5, 0 0.6, around the 0 0.6 risk level or so. And then we ultimately found support and then continued trending higher. Now, the, the reason why this is important is because there's a lot of new people in the space and they do not understand how scary corrections can be. And we will have corrections, okay? We do a lot of, I've done some price prediction videos recently 
and we we call some for for some i mean they're conservative by most people's standards and on in say crypto youtube because a lot of people are, are just throwing out 100x's like they're going out of style but they're somewhat conservative compared to what a lot of people might say but you also have to consider they're very they're very uh they're they're all they're fairly far off down the road okay we're not just going to go straight up right dot's not going to go straight to 300 dollars. cardano is not going to go straight to five or ten dollars most likely ethereum's not going to go straight to ten thousand dollars and bitcoin's not going to go straight to 100 to 200 thousand dollars most likely though it does seem to be on the track so that is what i want to that is what i want to communicate with everyone that when we talk about price predictions we're talking about for the duration of the market cycle not necessarily before you get a substantial pullback because we could have a substantial pullback that's not necessarily the end of the market cycle but it could leave some people to say overexposed in crypto and they might not realize they're overexposed until they see their portfolio pull back 50 percent in a week okay so this is what i want to to caution people about is that the asset class as a whole is getting fairly heated and this risk metric does take into account diminishing returns so if you don't believe in diminishing returns from one cycle to another then you probably don't want to follow this risk metric if you do think that returns will diminish over time because they have so far then i think this one would be more useful so what i would say and we already had one pullback a few weeks ago um, it wasn't very substantial. It wasn't as substantial as, as this one over here, or definitely not this one or this one, but it was a small one. I want, I, I want people to be prepared for a more sizable pullback mm -hmm. at some point and to not necessarily see that as reason to run for the hills, as reason to you know be scared and panic sell, but as reason to treat it like an opportunity if we get these types of moves. If history has taught us anything, it's the people that buy during corrections, whether you started buying way up here, they're the, ultimately the winners, right? The, the, the people that just systematically accumulate in these regions are ultimately the winners. The people that accumulate at the peaks, the local peaks, can sometimes be winners in the short term, but a lot of times they'll have to wait a little while to see, you know, to see a sustained um, ROI in their portfolio, for instance. If you had accumulated crypto here at this local top, well, in the short term, you would have done quite well. But then if you kept holding, eventually you would have been basically right back to where you started in terms of the entire cryptocurrency market capitalization. A lot of people did that. They invested a lot in crypto. They saw it go through the roof and then they saw it crash, bound, crash back down exactly to where they started. So accumulating at the peaks can often, a lot of times maybe in the short term it works out, but over the long term, we might come back and test those levels. So what I would say in this scenario is that we could continue going up, okay? And we could go up for a while longer before having a sizable pullback. You can see this better on this chart. This takes the color out of it. We're just looking at the risk metric for the cryptocurrency asset class. We've, you know, we hit the, we came up, we've been in various levels before. I've, I've told people on the premium list, I generally am okay accumulating um, in general, if the risk is below 0.7, for any individual cryptocurrency asset, I would like to see it below 0.5 to be putting fresh powder into the space. Sometimes I might make some crypto to crypto swing trades um, when the risks are higher, but I, I would not be putting fresh money into the space, if that makes sense. Okay, so the way I navigate these cycles, and you might say, well, Ben, this seems this is all great in hindsight. We had these risk metrics for years on this channel, okay? If you go back and look at videos we had a year or two ago, we were talking about it. We were talking about the Bitcoin risk metric when it was all the way down at 0.2 and 0.3. And then when it goes up to the higher levels, you know, and we talk about things getting heated in the short term and that we might expect a pullback, a lot of times people don't want to hear it because they just want to think it's going to go up forever. And I'll be the first to contend that there's a higher probability that Bitcoin continues to go up than, than go down because of momentum. Uh, momentum is, is really strong. So one of the things we look at here is I say, well, I'm fairly risk averse. What I like to see is the asset class as a whole have a risk level below 0.7 for me to be putting a lot of new money into the space, fresh money from, say, my bank account. And when it gets to, say, higher levels, okay, higher levels, I generally start taking profits, okay? I mean, to be completely honest, I have taken some profits off the table. Uh, but I still have the majority of a lot of my cryptocurrency positions. And the reason is because a lot of these altcoins that I hold, Link, ADA, DOT, Ethereum, I don't really consider Ethereum an altcoin, but just to include it, a lot of these coins, I do think they have more theoretical upside in the short term. I'm not 100% convinced, of course, because it will depend on if Bitcoin has a correction. 
But if they do have a lot more short-term um, uh, price move to the upside, then it could yield a decisive move to the 0.9 to 1 wristband. The 0.9 to 1 wristband for me is sort of this coveted wristband for crypto. And we don't make it there very often, but when we do, it it's worth it's worth discussing. It's worth talking about. It's worth thinking about. We've been there before. We've had moves into it in 2013. We had two moves into it. So this would be a prime example of something we could theoretically experience this market cycle. A major move up, a pullback, and then maybe a second peak later on, or a third peak if you want to consider the 2019 peak to be the first peak. I don't imagine many people would consider 2019 to be the first peak of that. So you could call this a, a first peak, second peak cycle if it were to continue to emulate 2013. And even, even though in 2013, there was like a 70 to 80% pullback, which scared a lot of people, it did not stop it from just trending back up several months later. So I want people, we're not saying that that's gonna happen, but I want people to be prepared for corrections and not to necessarily think that just because there is a correction that the market cycle is over, because there's a decent chance that even in the event of a correction, the market cycle is not over, okay? So this is what I wanna draw people's attention to. There were times last cycle where we came up to this a risk level around this, around this point. We had a sizable pullback, but we still continued higher. So what would, what would caution me exceedingly cautious, like what would make me exceedingly cautious within the cryptocurrency asset class as a whole is if we went back up to the one level, like if we go back up to one, because a lot of times, you know, when we're going up to that level, we're there for such a short period of time and you have to be very, very careful. Okay, there's no guarantee we make it to that level. You can see there's been plenty of times where we peaked out before that level, before having a sizable pullback. But if we do go to that level, I want, to, I want people to recognize that the chance of a pullback is fairly high. It doesn't mean it has to happen, right? It's not financial advice. It's just based on historical data. Doesn't mean it has to happen. But there is a lot of risk that you're taking on in that situation, right? If, if we were to go back up to, say, the one risk level all the way back up here, it would make me exceedingly cautious in the short term. Over the long term, I think cryptocurrency is here to stay. Uh, here to stay, but I, I, you know, I, I would treat a pullback, even if it's a, even if it's like a forty percent pullback, like we had last cycle. I think that would be a great opportunity if that were to happen. If it were a larger pullback, it would turn a lot of stomachs for sure. Doesn't mean it's the end of the market cycle. This was a double peak cycle. This cycle, we, I mean, in terms of Bitcoin, it wasn't really a double peak. But in terms of the risk metric on the entire cryptocurrency asset class, we actually did go up to around the 0.9 risk level in the summer. And for those people that were around back then, we know why, because a lot of altcoins were doing quite well. So you have to consider the fact that it's the entire asset class, not just Bitcoin, for this risk metric. Things are fairly heated right now, but they can stay heated for a while. OK, it doesn't mean that it's going to end tomorrow. This could go on for several weeks. And during that time, people could make a lot of money. Now, whenever there is a pullback, it's going to be scary. There's going to be blood in the street. A lot of people are going to be fearful. When I do a live stream, people are going to be asking the most ridiculous questions. Um, I would say to stay diligent. I would say to just stay diligent, stay disciplined, because we know that corrections will likely happen along the way. It doesn't mean it's the end of the market cycle. Now, if you're curious, the amount of days we've spent in each wristband, the the days that we spend in the 0.3 to 0.4 wristband, that tends to be the most, over 900 days in that wristband. We do not tend to spend many many days in lower wristbands. And this is basically taking into account all data from now until the, the beginning, okay, all the way back to 2010. So you can see we spend the most time in 0.3 to 0.4. This is a, a very strong accumulation phase when we're in this region, whether we're going down or up. If you ever see us in this region in the future, it's an opportunity. It's a huge opportunity. A lot of people during those times are running for the hills. They want nothing to do with crypto. Their family might be making fun of them because they got them to FOMO in at the top, but that's where the real money is made, okay? Bull markets can make you money. Bear markets can make you rich. When you're in the bear market, that's when you accumulate heavily. That way you can reap the rewards later on in the, in the bull market. So when we put out these price prediction videos, while I do think there's a decent chance a lot of the, the valuations could come true this market cycle, you have to recognize that there's probably going to be sizable corrections along the way. Okay, and this is why I always say it. I mean, I think there will be sizable corrections along the way. And even with altcoins, with a lot of altcoins, we'll see probably 50, 60% corrections. Doesn't mean it's the end of the market cycle. It might just mean it's time to load back up. So 
if we look at the percentage of time we spend in each wristband, you can see that in the 0.9 to 1 wristband, we don't really spend that long. You're looking at, at probably around, you know, less than 1% of our time um, in, that, in that wristband, just like, you know, a few weeks. So when we look at this risk metric, we can see we barely hit the 0.9 wristband. We do not spend much time in it. So if over the next few weeks or the next couple months, we have a, a major move all the way up to the 0.9 to 1 wristband, and let's say we go all the way up to one, I'm gonna be exceedingly cautious at that point. Um, and again, there's no guarantee we make it there. And if we come back down, then it would probably just represent an accumulation period again. But I would say, keep your eyes on this um, and, and we'll see. So in order to give you an idea of where we would need to go in the immediate term to get to a, a valuation of 1.00 on the total cryptocurrency asset class risk metric, we would need to go to a modest 2.28 trillion. However, it does go up by about 100 billion every week or so. Um, it depends on it depends on what the what the market cap is doing. So I would say it's a moving target. If we were to go to 2.28 trillion tomorrow, then it would represent a 1.00 risk. If we were to go to 2.28 trillion two months from now, then the risk could be the same as it is today because it is a moving target and it's all in reference to prior moves, prior data, and we, we build this channel off prior data. So hopefully this video is useful. Hopefully this video is useful on the total current cryptocurrency market capitalization risk metric. This is why I think there is a decent chance sometime over the next few weeks or months, we will have a sizable pullback, but we've also showed plenty of charts to suggest that there's a decent chance we're not we're not near the end of the market cycle. I do think that Bitcoin will ultimately go to 100 to 200K this market cycle. Um, but I don't know that that's going to necessarily happen next month. I mean, I know a lot of people are calling for it to happen next month or by May. Generally, a lot of a lot of people are calling for, say, a May $100,000 Bitcoin, maybe this summer. We'll be happy if it happens, but I don't think it's something you can take to the bank. It's not financial advice, of course. Don't don't assume that it has to go anywhere. We'll take it one step at a time. If you want access to this risk metric, we have it on the premium list. You can check out the altcoin season sale in the description below. We'll leave the sale going on for about six more days if you want to lock in the lower rate. Subscribe to the channel at the very least. Also on the on the um, the premium list, you get access to trading view indicators, the risk dashboard, the premium reports and videos, an Into the Cryptoverse app. It's a new feature and you get risk levels for a lot of different cryptocurrencies, not just the total crypto market cap. Check it out. Um, subscribe to the channel at the very least. Let's go for 200,000 subscribers. We're almost there. We're going up by like 10,000 subscribers a day at this point. Really appreciate the support. Subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.